Well, it's never too early to start speculating. So since that devastating ending of Spider-Man Far From Home, with Mysterio and J. Jonah Jameson revealing Spider-Man's secret identity to the world and accusing him of mass murder, I think everybody's mind has been just racing with, how is Spidey gonna get out of this one? How the hell is MCU Spider-Man 3 and Spider-Man films going forward going to play out? So I figured just for entertainment purposes, I would put together a few theories and predictions of what I think is going to happen in MCU Spider-Man. Spider-Man 3 with its rumored title Spider-Man Home Run. So obviously it's highly expected that we will be seeing appearances from Kraven, the Hunter, and the Scorpion. In the case of Kraven, he's been rumored for a while now. Tom Holland and John Watts have shown a great deal of enthusiasm in the idea of having Kraven the Hunter in this film. Obviously Tom Holland doesn't really get the say. But during press for Spider-Man Homecoming, Tom Holland said he'd love to face off with Mysterio and that has happened. And after the attack in London, Spider-Man probably has quite a target on his head. And I imagine the perfect person to aim for that that target would be Kraven the Hunter. And I think Kraven the Hunter would work well because he's not really a guy with superpowers, he's more of a strategist. And then of course you team that strategist up with a set of brawn, you've got the Scorpion. And the Scorpion has been highly hinted at by Spider-Man Homecoming and its after credits, showing us Mac Gargan, and showing that he already has something of a vested interest in Spider-Man. So I feel like Scorpion and Kraven could be a decent match. All right, that's all the more predictable stuff out the way. Now let's go into my ideas. So after being accused of the massacre in London, Spider-Man is now perceived as a threat. Everybody hates Peter Parker, and everybody knows who he is. Now, in the comic books, there is a certain Spider-Man villain who hates Peter Parker and knows his secret identity. Another thing I suppose a story like this could command would be for Spider-Man to team up with someone that could help to clear his name. Maybe a journalistic reporter? Come on, you know where I'm going with this. I think this would be the perfect opportunity to finally have Spider-Man and Venom cross over. Venom's hatred of Spider-Man Man is a very interesting and integral part of his character in Venom's early appearances in the comic books. While Spider-Man is perceived as a terrorist, this would be the perfect opportunity for us to have a Spider-Man versus Venom fight, maybe the only opportunity to do that. Then upon learning the truth, journalistic reporter Eddie Brock could help Peter Parker to clear his name. This wouldn't be the first time that Spider-Man and Venom have teamed up. And given that this version of Venom is more of a straight-up protagonist, I think this is really the only way they can do a Spider-Man versus Venom conflict without it being incredibly confusing. Also, the timing is really good, and I know that this is a bit of a reach, but Spider-Man did wear a black suit in Spider-Man Far From Home, so if we meet Venom in the next movie, it's kind of, you know, aesthetically speaking, we've kind of got that story going. We've got the wheels turning. I mean, it's a means of getting everybody to shut up. Further evidence that this is a possibility, though, is back when Spider-Man's rights went back to Sony for a whole month last year, Sony did state that Spider-Man would be crossing over with one of their own characters, and the only character that Sony have in their Sony Pictures universe of Marvel characters, or in the abbreviated term, Spunk, as of right now is Venom. Not to mention that Spider-Man and Venom being on screen together is all Sony have wanted for ages, and that a huge part of Sony's mandate with renegotiating the rights to Spider-Man was for these two universes to be able to cross over. And then on top of that, Tom Holland saying that we would see Spider-Man and Venom cross over someday, I feel like it's almost a certainty that we will be seeing Venom in the third MCU Spider-Man film, and that now would be the best time to do this. Okay, moving on to another one. Adrian Toomes was the first villain in the MCU to discover Peter Parker's secret identity. And out of respect and gratitude for keeping his daughter safe, we saw in the exchange between Scorpion and Vulture that Vulture is keeping Spider-Man's secret. Now that that secret is out, it could be a good chance to see how the Vulture and Spider-Man's dynamic has changed. Maybe Spider-Man and the Vulture could work together. Maybe Vulture could be kind of the midway point between Spider-Man and the Scorpion. I would also like to think that we haven't seen the last of Mysterio. Mysterio isn't the kind of guy to die and mean it. He's always got something up his sleeve, and it was never explicitly stated in Far From Home that he is actually dead. I mean, look at it this way. Quinton Beck had prepared in advance to frame Spider-Man for his death. 
Revealing Spider-Man's identity and revealing him as a terrorist was part of the plan. So the question is, is Quentin Beck the kind of guy prepared to die for his own cause? I think he's far too much of a narcissistic megalomaniac to do that. And it would also be interesting to see where this story goes if Mysterio is outed as a liar. The fact is, Mysterio has dealt an incredible blow to Spider-Man, and I would love to see that pay off. I would love to see Spider-Man strike back against Mysterio. Not to mention, Mysterio is just the fucking best. I will not accept that these movies are peak, man. Now, if everything is as I have suggested, Spider-Man 3 would be an incredibly villain-packed movie. However, this does line up, because if you've got Kraven the Hunter, the Scorpion, the Vulture, and Mysterio, you've got yourself four villains right there. And you know, the Shocker isn't dead, so you could always add him to the equation. So you've got five of your potential Sinister Six right there. But for the first half of the film before they team up, if they do go down that road, you could have Venom in the Sinister Six. So then MCU Spider-Man 3 ends up being a Sinister Six movie. Now I know what you're thinking here. This is masturbatory. This is just a fanboy wet dream. This is just another fanboy on the internet just giving off a shopping list of a load of shit that's completely infeasible for one movie. But put it this way, five members of that Sinister Six have already been pretty meticulously set up. If we include Venom, that makes all six have already been set up. All you need is to bring them together and they've sure got a motivation with Spider-Man now having a massive target on his head. But here's another part of my reasoning. Here is why I am suggesting this. It's because Sony are in charge of these movies ultimately. They get the final say. Now then, they've made it very clear that they have a huge boner for the Sinister Six and Venom. If you've seen my video where I talked about the originally planned Amazing Spider-Man 3, you know that for a third Spider-Man movie, Sony had every intention of including Venom and the Sinister Six in one movie together. And we also know that Sony has every intention of making Sinister Six movies. Imagine if Sony Pictures wanted to withdraw the rights to Spider-Man now, they would have the entire Sinister Six set up by Marvel Studios. Maybe this was part of the negotiations. We don't know exactly what the negotiations were, but maybe Sony were like, okay, look, if, if we're gonna do this one last movie together, why don't you set up the Sinister Six for us? And then Marvel were just like, yeah, okay, so if we set up the Sinister Six, you'll let us do one more Spider-Man movie? Yeah, that's fine, go ahead. Because these are things that Sony wanted. And it is kind of a way of living out their idea of the amazing Spider-Man 3, but with, without it being a massive piece of shit, like was discussed in a previous video. Please don't just think I'm being presumptuous here, really. Like, watch that video. Seriously, <laughs> it looked bad. No amount of open-mindedness can fix that catastrophe. So another thing we can expect is that we will be seeing J J.K. Simmons return as J. Jonah Jameson once again. After all, he is contracted for multiple movies in the MCU. This is also the man that bought the world the footage of Spider-Man's identity reveal, so he's pretty important. So maybe we'll be seeing a little bit of his anti-Spidey agenda. Now then, as for resolving the identity reveal, there is a number of different ways this could go. On one hand, maybe Spider-Man's identity will remain revealed in this universe, and future movies will revolve around him adjusting to being a superhero whose identity is known to the world. Maybe that's just gonna be the thing for MCU Spidey going forward. The Sam Raimi era Spider-Man had organic webs, the Mark Webb era Spider-Man was trying to uncover the mystery of his parents, so maybe the big X factor of the John Watts Spider-Man is gonna be that he's a Spider-Man whose identity is known around the world. I mean, to be 100% fair, what does this really change? As far as the movies are concerned, like, 9 out of 10 Spider-Man villains finds out Peter's true identity before the end of the film. However, I do think Spider-Man being the only hero in the MCU to have a secret identity, that kind of makes the secret identity integral to the character of Spider-Man. So maybe reverting Spider-Man's identity will lead to Spider-Man working harder to keep his identity a secret, insisting on leaving his mask on when meeting up with creepy fishbowl-clad interdimensionals. Maybe after this, Spider-Man movies going forward won't constantly reveal Spider-Man's identity to the main villain, something I would definitely welcome. So, how could they revert this? Well, Doctor Strange exists in this universe and he could do some mystic fuckery to reverse the whole situation. Maybe this won't be the film to do it. Maybe Spider-Man's identity will be reverted, but it will be in a future movie as opposed to this one. Maybe that'll be the cliffhanger, like whether Peter Parker decides to come out himself, or whether he decides to keep his identity a secret going forward, making this film a very pivotal moment in Spidey history. Another alternative, and this one I'm not so fond of, but it's something I could imagine happening, is that they have set up that Miles Morales does exist in this universe. So, boom, you want Spider-Man to have a secret identity that's actually a secret again? 
kill off Peter Parker, bring in Miles Morales, have Miles keep his identity a secret. Done and done. This is the consequence of taking off your mask in front of Jake Gyllenhaal. Now here's a theory that I didn't come up with, but my good pal Michael Enamorato from Tough Cookie Media came up with. And to be fair, I think this one here is pretty airtight. Nick Fury would hire a scroll to pose as Peter Parker, while the real Peter Parker is off being Spider-Man, to prove that Peter Parker and Spider-Man cannot be the same person. And I mean, it has been set up that Nick Fury is to some degree in cahoots with the Skrulls, and they did make a point of including Skrulls in Spider-Man Far From Home. So do you think they included the Skrulls in Spider-Man Far From Home just to gloss over character contrivances with Nick Fury, or do you think they might have been setting this up? Because this would certainly deliver some payoff on that after credit scene, and if the Skrulls can imitate Nick Fury, they can certainly imitate Peter Parker. So I think if you put all this together, you've got a pretty good story. J. Jonah Jameson running an anti-Spidey smear campaign, Spidey now being fair game gathers the Sinister Six together to destroy him, a team that Venom is a part of, until Venom gets to know Peter Parker a little better and tries to help him clear his name, as well as defeat the rest of the Sinister Six, leading to Nick Fury finally helping Peter to clear his name by getting his scroll buddies to impersonate Peter Parker so that Peter Parker and Spider-Man can stand together in the same room. And as well as that, the truth about Mysterio gets out. So Mysterio is exposed as a fraud and thrown into jail. <laughs> Don't drop the soap, Beck. So that's basically my prediction for MCU Spider-Man 3. I would love to hear what your predictions are. What do you think, guys? Comment below and discuss, and as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, why don't you head over to channelpup.net, where you can visit our blog page, Dr. Blogtopus, but you can also buy merch, such as the official Channel Pup replica hoodie. And I mean, if you insist here, guys, maybe hit subscribe, maybe hit the like button, and in the description below are the links to my social media handles, including the Patreon, where your contribution can help me run this channel and really keep it alive. That aside, I am really grateful that you checked out this video today. Day. Thank you so much for watching, fellow home dog. See you on another video.